Hello and welcome or welcome back to the channel. In today's video I'm going to be scaping this 20 by 20 by 20 centimetre cube. Now this was just a little cheapy from Amazon but it's a nice opti white glass and I think it's going to make for a nice scape. So the wood that we're going to be using today is Redmore root wood and the stone that I'm going to be using is some small bits of dragon stone from Wheo. So this is from the Wheo Eco range. Um, this is a very dusty stone so I would wash it. And we're actually going to be using the Wellstad method today which is topsoil. So um, I just literally went out into the garden and dug some soil. I've never done this before. This is very much experimental. Um, I'm not going to sieve it or like uh, like use heat to try and kill anything. I'm just going to go straight in with uh, the soil into the aquarium. But I am just going to add a handful of um, pond soil to it as well. Just for luck. I've never done this before. Um, this is all very new to me. Um, so yeah, just a, a handful of each basically and I'm just going to mix that in and that's going to form the basis of our substrate today and is what's going to provide the nutrients to the plants. So I'm just going to go into the tank, um, as I say, just straight from the garden to the tank um, with this soil and with the little bit of aqua soil. Um, and I'm just going to kind of layer it flat, mostly towards the back of the tank because that's where the heaviest part of the planting is. And I'm just kind of stabbing it just to break down any of the sort of bigger clumps. It's quite clayy. The soil in my garden is like quite clay-like. So yeah, I'm also going to add in some um, gravel and I'm just going to kind of mix that together. This is just to stop it um, like compacting and potentially going anaerobic. So it just kind of keeps um, a bit of flow and essentially aeration through the uh, substrate layer and I'm just going to mix that in and then I'm going to cap it with play sand so this is uh, literally left over from when I built my pond it's kids play sand um, and I just kind of built this up gradually but I do want quite a thick layer because I want to cap this down because I don't think this would be ideal if it got into your um, water co column I think it'd make the water quite uh, dirty and cloudy and not very nice unlike aqua soil which kind of doesn't matter so yeah I'm just gonna keep adding um, layers till I'm kind of happy with it until it makes like a decent la uh, layer to plant into so it's a few centimeters thick as you can see from the side there um, but we are going to be going on top of that with uh, a decorative sand after but first I'm just going to place the hardscape so I'm going to be using two pieces of red moor root um, just a very simple triangular composition there's a slightly bigger thicker piece of wood in the foreground and then a more like spindly piece in the background hopefully this just sort of gives a sense of depth if you use the thicker bigger bit at the front and the smaller bit at the back it's that kind of forced perspective and I'm just going to glue this together because this will definitely float so I'm just going to use some kitchen roll um, which is just rolled up put into the contact points and then I'm just going to add some uh, cyanoacrylate super glue Next, I'm just going to remove this, but well, push this bit of sand, uh, this play sand back from the front just so you don't see it. Um, you don't have to do this, but I guess it just makes it look a little bit neater. And I'm going to go in with some uh, sand that I had left over. This is We Are Eco Heaven Sand. Now, in hindsight, I probably should have washed this because this is an extremely dusty sand. The sands from We Are, are lovely and they are really nice. Um, but a lot of the finer stuff, so for example this and the Eldorado sand, which are two I've used before, are extremely dusty. So you definitely would benefit from washing this, especially if you're using it in a scape that doesn't have a filter, which is what this is going to be, because it's going to be extremely low-tech. Um, but yeah, so that's now capped with the decorative layer of sand and it helps the red moor root wood pop now you can kind of see it. I know you couldn't see it before when it was against the play sand because it was essentially the same colour almost. So next we're just going to add a few pieces of dragon stone. I'm not going to go overboard with this. It's literally just going to be three or four small pieces just to add some ac accents and just to add some details. I'm just going to put them around the base and obviously I will also use them as anchor points to glue the scape to as well just to make sure again that it, it doesn't float. Um, so yeah, I think there's literally just four pieces um, in the scape of actual stone. And then next I'm just going to use some uh, Dewa River Sand. This is basically just a more thicker, bigger version of La Plata Sand, but it just gives a nice uh, gradation and texture and it just helps things look a lot more natural. 
and it just ties things in as well. So if anyone's a regular viewer of the channel, um, grading sand and graded gravels in the foreground is kind of like my favourite thing. I kind of prefer it to a carpet. Um, and it's also just easier maintenance wise than a carpet. And then next, I'm just going to use some of the gravel that I used on the base layer. Again, just to add some more detail and a little bit more texture and just to bring a little bit more colour into it because it's quite... Uh, it's quite monotoned at the minute and these gravels have got sort of darker greyer bits in so as you can see it just one helps tie everything together and makes it look more natural and it just makes it look more interesting and just kind of adds that pop of colour. So this is pretty much it for the hardscape. Um, planting is going to be the sort of struggle here because it's such a small scape it's going to be really hard to keep scale in terms of plants because I'm going to have to use really small aquarium plants but because I'm doing this on a budget um, I'm going to be using trimmings so this might change over time but for now we're going to use uh, these plants which have come from my tank. So the first plant that we're going in with is a stem plant and it's called Limnophila sessiflora. Now this is an extremely fast uh, and easy stem it's a plant that a lot of people like will, will use uh, like professional aquascapers when they've created a scape um, but they want to help uh, sort of that nutrient balance at the beginning. They'll just put pots of Limnophila sessiflora and just help take up all those excess nutrients and help prevent algae. So I figured this would be a good plant for a low tech uh, and Wallstad style setup. And the plant that I'm going in with here is just some Starogyne repens. Um, again, just trimmings from my scape. So it's it's probably going to look a little bit sparse. Um, it is going to be something that we're just going to watch grow in. Next is just a piece of Albeda brown that's going in the back there. Um, just to add a little bit of colour. And there's a little bit in the front as well. They take on sort of like a nice browny ready colour. Um, so it'll just be nice to add a pop of colour in there as well. And then we've got a small crypt as well going in the background. It might get a little bit too big for this scape, um, but we'll see. And then this is some hydrocotyl tripartita. This is an extremely fast grow. It's like a weed, but again, it's just great. Things that grow fast generally take up nutrients quicker, which is all going to help in the long run uh, to fend off algae, if you like. And then there's just a small piece of Anubius. I would ideally like to add um, some mini coin into this skip, but I don't have any. And also mini coin, because it's quite new, it's quite an expensive plant, especially in the UK. I think it's like 10, 11 pound a pot. And I find that Anubius in new scapes is prone to melting. And I think that's down to ammonia levels, especially. And because I really don't know what the water parameters are going to be like in this scape, uh, due to the substrate that we're using I didn't want to put it in just yet in case it just all melted so I will add that at some point and obviously we'll do an update video on this um, but next is just some moss and um, this is just java moss and I'm just gluing it on with a tiny bit of super glue um, and I'm just going to put that in a few places I don't want to put it in too many places because it's going to be hard to trim given how small this scape is I know it's going to be quite tricky, so we'll just put a bit at the top. Hopefully that might grow out the water and then just a little bit at the bottom as well. Just add a bit of detail in the foreground because I'm aware there's not much at the minute, but it is something that we can add to. But for now, the main thing that I wanted is just some fast growing stem plants, which Starogyne, especially in my water, grows pretty fast. As I say, Limnophila sessiflora is just a a weapon in this case it it does grow really fast and as does the hydrocotyle plus it's small and it'll help keep some level of scale to this scape which i think is going to be the trickiest thing but for now the thing is just is this going to work um as a well stud style tank and last but not least um and probably one of the most important things in any low tech setup is floating plants so these are just some not very red red root floaters and this is it just after filling um yeah it's sparse um but yeah it's going to be interesting to see um how it grows um because i didn't wash this sand a few hours later it was just really really cloudy um so as it stands today i think the scape is a week old and as i said this is just directly after 
putting water in so everything is still looking quite bright uh, and vibrant but then this is it a week from now so I've been doing daily water changes but the thing that I've noticed is that the plants and the wood and the sides of the glass I mean this is after a clean for the video but it's just getting covered in this slime this really weird white like milky residue and it's kind of covering the plants as well so I would say that my phone is probably making this look a little bit more saturated and a little bit more vibrant than it actually is in real life um the Limnophila sessifor is not too bad and it has actually been growing. Uh, there is a piece of HR in there that I put in by accident which has taken off massively. But especially the sort of background plants like the Starragini, they're just covered in this white... I, I don't really don't know what it is, like a film I thought could it be from the wood but I'm not so sure. So it's a kind of an underwhelming end to the video and I apologise but we will do an update on this video in a few weeks time. But I just wanted to show you this in sort of real time and we can see in real time how this actually develops. As I said this is very experimental, I've never done a Wallstad style before, I'm not sure what to expect if this is normal, if it isn't normal. Um, but I'm just going to carry on with the daily water changes and cleaning it um, and yeah the plants are growing so that's a good sign it's just the coating's a little bit weird and I'm not sure what it is but yeah um, if you join me in a few weeks time we'll have a look and see how it's developing thank you so much for watching it really means a lot and I will see you on the next one